Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So this is a lesson about software development and coding, but I'm gonna illustrate the lesson by using camera lenses. So these are two camera lenses from uh, Canon, and they're both equivalent in just about every respect. These are both 24 millimeter, 2.8 lenses. If you don't know camera stuff, uh, it's basically, it's the characteristic of the lens. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. Now, this lens here, this little skinny one, which is actually, some people say, is advantageous because it's thin and flat, so it makes your camera much uh, smaller and easier to handle than this big lens. This lens goes for about $200, Canadian dollars. And this goes for about 700, 750 Canadian dollars. So that's about a dollar US and three dollars US. I'm just joking. Anyway, 200, 700. And uh, yeah, so you figure that this $750 lens is gonna be much, much nicer than this $200 lens, right? Well, you'd figure that, and I bought these two, and I have to tell you something, I bought this one first, and then I saw this one, and I just found a guy at Kijiji, he said, hey, uh, Kijiji is like Canadian's Craigslist. And uh, so I, he, bought, he sold me this one for like $325, half price, something like less than half. So I bought it. I assumed that this one here was gonna be significantly better looking than this one here, since all the other characteristics are the same in terms of, uh, they're both 24 millimeter, they're both 2.8. If you don't know what those uh, numbers mean, doesn't matter. Anyway, long story short, I put them on the camera, I filmed the exact same scene, I've done many tests many times, the images are literally identical. Identical, no difference, no difference. The only difference that this lens has, it has something called image stabilization, so if you're shooting video and you got a shaky hand, this lens has a little mechanism built into it that will try to stabilize the image so it's not as shaky looking. Comes in very handy when you are shooting in low light. I won't explain why, because it's not a camera channel. It's also very good when you're doing video. That's what I was doing. So the only advantage that you're getting from this lens here, which is more than triple the price of this lens, is that this lens has stabilization in it. That's it. This has other advantages. When this focuses, you don't hear noise. When this focuses, you hear all kinds of noise. You hear <laughs> So what's the point of this video? How does the story of these lenses have anything to do with software development programming? Well, my young nerd lead friends, there are a couple of principles here. Number one, the most obvious, is the law of diminishing returns. So what is the law of diminishing returns? The law of diminishing return tells you that as you spend more and more money on something, the increase in quality diminishes over time. So I use the example of my very expensive speakers. I have speakers for stereo systems. And between $200 speakers and $1,000 speakers, the sound quality is significantly better. No question about that. But when you go from one, let's say it's, four times better. But when you go from $1,000 speakers to $4,000 speakers, the quality difference might be 25% better. And you go from $4,000 speakers to $10,000 speakers, the quality of sound difference, if you're lucky, might be another 5% better. As you go up to scale, as your speakers get more and more expensive, the quality diminishes even though you're putting all kinds of money into it. The same thing with these two lenses. The, if there's any, there's no quality di increase in fact with these two lenses in terms of visual quality. The only thing that this has is image stabilization which may or may not be important to you. But besides that they look exactly the same and I would argue that this lens is superior in some ways because it's much smaller and it's much quieter when it's doing its focusing. You see the same way when it comes to programming languages, when it comes to frameworks, when it comes to libraries, you will see that even though a certain language may have a certain 
incremental advantage in a particular use case, in a particular area where it may be a little bit better. A lot of times, the performance increase that you have, let's say, with Python doing X, Y, and Z versus C Sharp doing X, Y, and Z is this much. So a lot of time, and I'm just throwing those, picking those two languages out of the blue. It, it's, you know, it's, they're just as examples, not, be, not to be taken literally. Just understand the principle. The principle is oftentimes the story out there is that this special language or this special framework is so much better. Oh my, it's, oh, it's, gonna, it's gonna change your life as a developer. This happens every so often, very rarely though, very rarely these days that you'll see a particular framework or a technology or a language be so much better than its competitors overall that it's worth jumping over. I've seen young developers say, oh, we've got to move from you know, stack A to stack B because we've read that stack B can do this and this and this. And what happens is when you do do that, change from stack A to stack B, a lot of times you'll see uh, the, the advantage that this new stack has over the old is at best marginal, meaning very, min very minimal. So you spend all this time and effort to move everything from stack A to stack B, and you're gonna get a marginal improvement at best. And sometimes you're gonna find that by moving from stack A, which is really good at doing A, and you go to stack B, which happens to be really good at doing B, but what you find is stack B, even though it's much better at stack B stuff than stack A can do, but you find all of a sudden, wait a second, stack B doesn't do certain things that stack A does so well, stack B doesn't do so well. So sometimes there's a lot of a trade-offs that are going on there. That's why I say in a lot of my videos, you have to look at the job at hand and pick the stack, pick the technology, pick the library, that's best suited to that situation. Very rare, very rare should you abandon a technology to move to something else, especially if you have a heavy investment in a technology. Very rare. So uh, I've been dealing with these type of decisions going back to the 90s. I've seen it time and time again. I literally took an app that I wrote, a web app, and I wrote the whole thing in Java. And uh, then I said .NET was out, was in beta, C Sharp .NET, which is great. I took it and I just rewrote the app from scratch in C Sharp .NET, just to compare, that's how much time I had, just to compare how it would be to write that app in .NET versus writing it in uh, Java. And what I found was exactly what I just said in that situation. I've seen this a few times, personally. I found that in certain areas, the .NET implementation was better, no question. But in other areas, it was inferior to Java. You know? So, at the end of the day, both stacks, Java, .NET, have their pros and cons. And which one you choose depends on a lot of factors, a lot of them outside of technical. It could be business factors, as I explained. It could be that if you have to interface with Microsoft products, then you're obviously much better off using .NET, because they blend well together. On the other hand, if you want to do, uh, I don't know, if you have a whole bunch of Java infrastructure and uh, you need to expand upon it, it'd be crazy to do it in .NET, even if you think that C Sharp is a better language than Java. If you already have a Java infrastructure, you have Java to tech skills in-house, in and you already have a Java app, to, to, to introduce a new technology where you're gonna need new expertise on top of that doesn't make any sense. The advantage of moving from stack A, from C Sharp to Java are marginal at best and probably not worth it. And back, forth, back and forth as well. If you already have an investment in C Sharp.net to move from C Sharp.net to Java, probably not worth it. One of the skills that differentiates the junior devs and the advanced devs is this, is this understanding and the ability to be able to look at projects with objective eyes and say, okay, what is best for that particular job given the global considerations that I just talked about here? That's why experienced uh, CTOs can have a huge impact in terms of the quality of the product going down the, going down the uh, road. The CTO makes the right architectural uh, uh, decisions, if you will, even beyond that, so that the uh, project rolls out nicely. 
Let me close with this. If you think that you need to use the latest type of technology to produce a great app, then look at Mac OS, look at Facebook, look at Instagram, look at um, Pinterest, look at there's so many sites, Twitter. They were all made with technologies from years and years and years ago, and they are super successful. Think about that. Facebook, one of the most successful apps ever created in the history of humanity. Twitter, you put it in that category. Pinterest, in that category, not as high up, but Pinterest. Instagram, they're all created with technologies and stacks that by today's standards, a lot of nerds would be, be holding no nose. Oh, I don't want to touch PHP. Ah, oh, it just made Facebook. Or I don't want to touch Ruby on Rails. It just made Instagram. Well, you don't want to touch Ruby on Rails. I don't want to touch... Pinterest, you, know, you get the idea, right? It's not so much the stack. It's really how you implement the code in an effective manner. So, you know, same thing, going back to these lenses, something related. Um, I discovered when I was learning to do all this filming that uh, the lighting's pretty dim now. Oh, well. What I learned was that uh, it was not so much the equipment. It's just how well you're able to use the equipment. So I went from just a uh, $1,000 camera to a $10,000 cinema camera. And I figured, ah, yeah, if I get the $10,000 cinema camera, the quality of my videos could be much better. Well, in the first you know, bunch of videos that came out of the cinema camera, because I didn't know what I was doing, it still looked like crap. You know, At the end of the day, you got to know your equipment. That's another little rule. Perhaps I should have put that in another video. But anyway, two for one for you guys.